The new Fire TV Cube is out, but are the updates enough to upgrade? Hmm, we'll talk about it. Hello friends, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Craig. I get excited about new tech and seeing what it can do for us. If that sounds like something you're into, subscribe, hit that bell and stick around. This is week 41 of my 2019 Echo series. The new Fire TV Cube is now out and available in more countries. I did a video talking about where it's available and about what this device brings. You can find that in the description. So you're wondering, should you upgrade? Or is now the time to get your first Fire TV Cube? That is a tough question. There are some features that may be really worth it for you or may not matter at all. Let's talk about what's new and look at it next to the previous generation. But first, if you're not familiar with the Fire TV Cube, it is basically a Fire TV and an Echo combined. You can do most things that you can do on an Echo. If you wanna learn about things that you can do with your Echo, check out my top 10 uses video in the description. But wait until you're done with this video. So with this device, you need to remember that it is a Fire TV device and not an Echo. Amazon has given it most of the features of an Echo. It is nice, unlike other Fire TVs, you can use this with the TV off. If for some reason Alexa is trying to respond through the TV speakers that are off, you can say, I can't hear you, and it'll switch to the built-in speaker on the bottom of the Echo Cube, and you'll be able to treat it like a regular Echo. With the Fire TV Cube, you can access all of Amazon's streaming services. You can access streaming services from other networks and providers. Uh, you can do apps and games. And recently, the YouTube app has come back to the Fire TV devices, really making it a lot more valuable for a lot of people. With the Fire TV Cube, you can control many functions hands-free and with your voice. There have been improvements with voice control on this new Fire TV that we'll get into in a few. Unlike other Fire TV devices, the Fire TV Cube has infrared emitters built in to control your TV and audio devices with your voice. This can add smart control to even older audio and video devices. I like that you can walk in the room, use your voice to turn everything on and get started with your favorite show. The setup of the Fire TV Cube is easy. When you buy it, it comes already linked to your Prime account. Just make sure to click the it's a gift box if you're buying this for someone else. When I plugged it in, I just had to confirm it was me setting up the device. It logged in and joined my other Echo devices. When it came to my apps, it gave me a list of the apps my previous Fire TV had on it. I did have to download them and sign into each one though before I could use it. So how does this stack up to the previous generation? In many ways, it's a very similar device. I actually couldn't tell which one was which when I had them side by side for this video clip. I had to plug it in and check the Alexa app to confirm which one was the new one. The hardware is the same, same amount of microphones on top, ports are the same, internally the Wi-Fi is the same. This also has the same storage at 16 gigabytes. Audio is the same and it offers the same resolutions. One of the big updates is the improved processor. The new Fire TV is sporting a hexacore processor. The previous version used a quad core processor. The new Fire TV Cube has an upgraded quad core processor and an added second dual core processor to bring it up to six, six cores, cores of, of power. power. That might've been a bit much. Amazon says this processor improvement makes voice commands faster and the device offers more on-device functionality, meaning not every command needs to go to the cloud and then come back. That is where a lot of the slowdown occurs with responses to commands that you make. I was skeptical of any real improvements here. I just figured this was talky talk lip service, but the new Fire TV Cube did seem snappier. I tended to use my remote on the previous version because it was too slow with voice. Now this is not a scientific experiment, but here are some comparisons of similar commands with the first generation Fire TV Cube. Play Watch Jack, Jack Ryan. Ryan. Getting Jack Ryan from Prime Video. Alexa select. Alexa select. Alexa select. Alexa select. Alexa, select. 
Suleiman killed that priest. Alexa, go home. Open PlayStation View. Open PlayStation View. Here's PlayStation View. Here's PlayStation View. Guys, no, we'll have a... Alexa, select. To select. And I will say a much greater. It's live right now with some. Alexa, select. Tell us where are you and what have you. Alexa, go home. Go home. Show movies. movies. Go right. Move Go right. right. Move right. Select the number two. Four. You could see with some of these responses that it just was quicker getting things done and voice really seemed like more of an option to me. Another upgrade is to the video side. There is now Dolby Vision and HDR10+. Plus. Going through the specs on the Amazon website, those look like the only real video improvement. Also going through the specs, I found that Bluetooth has been updated from Bluetooth 4.2 to Bluetooth 5. Bluetooth 5 is twice as fast and has four times the range of Bluetooth 4.2 that the previous version has. Now, Amazon hasn't mentioned any new functionality because of the Bluetooth. I am curious if we'll see that potential utilized though. Maybe we could finally pair it with some new echoes as stereo speakers and not see the sound out of sync with the video. Something we should have been able to do for a while. Looking at you, Amazon. Anyways, personally, I think one of the biggest improvements to the whole thing is the remote. With version one, there was no power button, mute button, or volume buttons. That meant you had to use your voice for everything or use your TV's remote. That was a bit frustrating for controlling the volume. Now, you have a power button to turn things on and off, volume up, volume down, and a mute button. Sometimes you wanna quietly watch TV without having to talk to your TV or use a second remote. So thumbs up, Amazon. This is a welcome addition. I do appreciate this. So when using the Fire TV Cube, it's a solid device like the first generation. You get access to the same apps and features as the previous model. If you're in the market to buy a Fire TV device, I could confidently recommend the Fire TV Cube. But if you're invested in Chromecast or Apple TV, I don't know if I'd run out and buy one. It is nice having the Echo features built in, but should you upgrade from generation one? I say, Hell no. No, I'm kidding. But you should ask yourself these questions. Do you use your voice primarily to navigate? If yes, the speed improvements might make it worth it. If you primarily use the remote, this may not be enough of an upgrade. Have you been missing HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision? Then definitely upgrade. I don't have those, so I wouldn't go out and buy this. Have you been missing volume and power buttons? This is the Fire TV Cube for you then. If you're in a country where the previous version was not available, I think it's a great device and it's worth it if you're looking for a media player. If you're not looking for a Fire TV device, personally, I'd recommend Apple TV. I like their interface. I think it's a little better than Amazon's. If you already have a Fire TV Cube and these small updates are not that important to you, I would not run out and buy one. I justified it for this channel because I am doing this for you or I probably would not get one. What are your thoughts on the new Fire TV Cube or the Fire TV Cube in general? Let us know in the comment section. Next, click this video over here to see the other Amazon devices that are coming out soon. If you like this video, you know what to do. Also, consider subscribing and click that bell to see some more videos. Thank you for watching this and have a great day. Bye.